Hi guys, today I'm going to show you a little demonstration on the type of braking that I do um, that's a little bit uh, different than most people. The, the reason why I started doing this was because I had an, an incident a couple years ago where I almost did an endo because my brake pads were too close to the rim. So I followed the instructions, you know, set them too close and a rock got stuck in it and I almost fell. I was going about 35 kilometers an hour, so yeah, it could have been pretty bad. But I, I was able to pull out of it and, and fall in a row and just scrape the leg. So from that point on, I immediately started uh, putting in a new way of doing the brake pads. I went to a five millimeter distance on the brake pads and these wind zip brakes, I'm going to close the lever here so you can see. This one's about uh, four and on the back, I go five because I use more of the uh, front brake. Okay, I, ne I never use uh, the back brake at all. I barely use it, it's more of the front brake. Um, so I keep four here, four millimeter and five millimeter in the back. And the reason why is so that Small items, I should even go bigger on the front, maybe even six, and just have uh, four or five over there in the back. It stops items from coming up the wheel and getting stuck. Uh, this is very, very dangerous because if you live in areas like I do here, where there's a lot of constructions, there's a lot of crap on the road, you have a tendency of things coming up the wheel and getting stuck. Okay, so if you want to do an endo at uh, 35 plus kilometers an hour, I, I'd like to see a video of you doing that because it'll be hilarious for me, but I don't want to be in that video. I don't want to be part of it. So from that point when I had that incident, I immediately started moving away from the three millimeter general accepted uh, uh, distance. It went to five. So this one in front, I have four and five on the back. So they're five millimeter apart from the rim. And another thing that relates to this, then I thought, well, what about braking now? Braking is going to be affected. Absolutely it will be because now you have to do preemptive braking. No more just relying on the fact that you're two millimeters away from the rim where you can just go and the whole brake is applied 100%. What I do is I try to keep it at 50%, okay? Try to apply maximum braking power at 50%. So that's as good for me as it should be. I don't need any more than that. But in order to brake now, there's a different pattern that you have to follow. And I'm going to show you how I brake. Now, this is very different than you've been taught, so please pay attention. When I'm going down the road, high rate of speed, and I see a potential hazard, and I want to slow down the bike, now what most people do, you got the back brake here, right? They back brake. And the back brake is applied, and they slow down. What I do is a different thing, is in order to save on pads, and in order to make them go years without replacing them, is I brake sequentially from the back to the front, back to front, back to front. Now, it doesn't mean to apply full brakes. That's not what it means. It means just to, because remember, there's a, a five millimeter gap. It allows me to go basically one, two, three, four. You do this very rapidly and your speed decreases significantly and you wear out less of the pads instead of applying full brakes on the back or front. So this is what I call the multi-pad braking. Basically what happens is you go from the back to the front, back to front, and you do this one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, back and forward, and you, it basically it's called tap braking. That's what I use, so basically like this. And on the right side here, all you're doing is you're making the pads come in contact with the rim just enough so that it starts slowing down from back to front, back to front. What ends up happening is the bike slows down faster and your pads could be further away from the rim and not get anything stuck in it. Now this tip is very critical if you use, if you're going around neighborhoods and there's a lot of kids around or there's a lot of dirt in the road and it's very dangerous. You have to be able to figure out a way to slow down in time. You don't want to hurt anybody or yourself. So. That's the way I break. It might not be the best way for you. So I've been using that for years. It's called tap breaking. And basically what it is is sequentially going from the back until the pads hit the rim just enough so they can hit and then immediately go to the other one. If you set up your brakes, this shouldn't be an issue for you. You know when they contact the rim because you set them up. If you don't set up your brakes or know how to set this up, Google it. YouTube is a great way to find out how to do this, okay? So this is another tip. It's very critical. Please understand that th these are my tips. They're for me. They might apply to you. They might work for you. But don't go ahead 
and take your pants off to, you know, eight or 10 millimeters off and then, and then call me and say, hey man, I crashed because I can stop in time. The point of moving the pants away from the rim is not to have this squeeze all the way in just to slow down and not stop. You have to be able to have a stopping distance at least the max I would say 70% pull, okay? Don't go more than that because you won't be able to stop. By doing this way, I can tap brake, okay, back and forth very rapidly and my bike slows down in a perfect straight line without skidding anywhere. This has been another tip. Enjoy your riding.